I have a friend who decided that she was going to strive to live 2022 in an attitude of gratitude. So every day on Facebook she posts a photo of something that has been a blessing to her and she writes a few words about it. We're 40 something days into 2022 and she's still going strong. Her photos have ranged from a beautiful sunset, a bowl of homemade soup, a bunch of tulips and her family, to a collection of household objects that her children stuck googly eyes on before they returned to university after the Christmas break. It's lovely to see her photos every day because at the very least it reminds me to be thankful myself. It's easy to say count your blessings and I often resolve to be more observant and try and notice my blessings and actually voice my thanks for them. But I seem to just as easily slip out of the habit and forget. When a massive blessing comes and hits me between the eyes, then I remember again. But I'm aware that there are hundreds of small blessings every day that I take for granted or that I let pass me by. Our readings today are both full of blessings. And in the Bible, blessing often seems to be linked with happiness. Sometimes translators use the word happy to describe the Greek word makarios or makarioi. And so there is a sense that in discovering that we are blessed, we are able to find true happiness. The psalm set for today is Psalm 1, which continues this idea. It begins, happy or blessed are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, they are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season. Perhaps all of these readings could together be summed up in one simple sentence. Blessed are those who live in dependence on God rather than in self-reliance. The whole idea of being happy, being blessed in the Bible is completely God-centred and not self-centred. To be happy is to trust your life to God and to conform to God's values of love, justice and peace. To be happy is to depend on God, knowing and trusting that God is sufficient for us to face even the worst situations. Jeremiah takes this right down to an essential level. It all goes back to the commitment of our hearts. It might seem appealing to be self-sufficient and to try and assert our independence. We can be seduced by the idea that we can manage on our own. We don't need any help. And we especially don't need divine assistance. But Jeremiah points out that this is not a good way to live. He says that people who try to live like that are like shrubs in a desert, struggling to exist in a dry land and failing to thrive because water and nourishment is not to be found. Blessing comes through trust in the Lord and those who live like that are like trees planted by streams of water able to stretch out their roots and remain green even in a time of drought. Jeremiah points out the problem with this though. The problem is, it doesn't always look like this. It doesn't always look as though those who are wicked are struggling and those who are faithful are thriving. So Jeremiah reminds us that God is not deceived by outward appearances. God knows our minds and our hearts and understands us. God knows our real thoughts about things. God knows why we do the things we do. So even when it looks as though the faithful struggle and the wicked prosper, don't worry. God knows. And those who are faithful will discover and acknowledge God's blessing. Jeremiah is seeking to encourage his community to remain faithful and to keep on trusting God, even when it seems that everything is falling apart. The passage from Luke is often called the Sermon on the Plain as Jesus comes down from the mountain to speak to a great crowd who had gathered to hear him. But this part of Luke's Gospel that forms our reading today is not addressed to the wider crowd. This bit of Jesus' teaching is for the disciples. It's addressed to those who have already committed to follow Jesus. Otherwise it could be seen as a bit of a bribe or emotional blackmail to the crowd, follow me or else. It's a shame the lectionary stops where it does because if we could read on a few verses we would hear Jesus say, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. 
do to others as you would have them do to you. Jesus goes on to tell the people that God is kind and merciful to the ungrateful and to the wicked, just as God is kind and merciful to those who know and acknowledge God as Lord of their lives. Those who know God and acknowledge their dependence on God are actually doubly blessed because we may notice our blessings and we can then attribute them to God and we can give thanks even more because we know where they've come from. We are blessed to know that we have received from the abundant love and generosity of God. We must always remember that Luke has a special concern for the poor and the oppressed, for those on the margins and often overlooked. And so we mustn't misunderstand what Jesus is saying here. I wouldn't want any one of us to try and tell someone to put up with a terrible situation like abuse or poverty or starvation because God will bless them. In Luke's Gospel, we are always brought back to the pledge of Jesus in the synagogue in chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. There's nothing in here about putting up with things, but rather working to make a difference. Today's reading does show us that there is a difference in the way God sees things and the way we often see things. We human beings often place value in things that are not of value to God. And so perhaps the challenge is not to put up with things, but to try and see with God's eyes and to feel with God's heart. And then we will be stirred to action and we will be agents of transformation in the world around us. And then we'll come to know even more of what it is to be blessed. In the Bible, there is always a sense that blessing is not a one-off action. God blesses Israel in order that Israel may be a blessing to the world. Blessings are to be passed on and shared. It's as though God instigates a whole chain of blessing. And each time we are blessed and each time we bless another, we are adding more and more links to that chain. Whenever we acknowledge that we have been blessed, we are compelled to pass that blessing on to somebody else. In this kind of living, we understand and accept both our dependence on God and our responsibility to be the hands and feet and body of Jesus in our world. In this kind of living, we may know true happiness because happiness and blessing come in placing God at the centre of all that we do and in reaching out to embrace others with open hearts and hands. So may we remember and affirm our dependence on God today, both as individuals and as part of the church. May we notice our blessings and be thankful for them. And may we be people who are open to give all that we have received to a world in need, that through us the blessing of God may be shared. Amen.